Hello guys, Sid the IT guy here and this is a review video that we are going to be taking a look at today where in the last video you were able to create a product by filling out this form and submitting it and the product was created in Shopify but there was no inventory information associated with it. So in this review video you will see that there is an additional input parameter here called inventory info in which I am listing out the locations that I have in my Shopify store admin. So let's take a look at the actual store on Shopify which is the Laravel project 2 that one I have here. So if we click settings and if we take out the locations here we have two locations first one is my apartment and my other apartment and if we scroll down we see the app locations which mean the public apps that register themselves as a fulfillment service apps. So basically what Shopify does it's uh, it creates locations for them as well but keeps it in a separate space in this case here. So it says third party services that manage inventory and fulfill orders. <clears throat> so CJ dropshipping and DSR's fulfillment service, both of them have the capability to manage the inventory for products. And these are the default ones that I just created. So in the form, you will see that there are, there are two extra parameters here, my apartment and my other apartment, the same ones that I have here. I was able to get this by the sync locations button I have up here. So basically what this does is fires up a job inside the job Shopify sync folder and here it is the locations.php. So in this uh, file I just call the locations JSON API and uh, I exactly copied the same code that I used in the order synchronization video. So if you are confused about this code please watch that video where I explain it so it would be clearer to you. Yeah. So that's how so that's how we were able to get the locations uh, to synchronize and populate it here. So in products controller you would see a private variable called legacy. So how we can identify that which, which, which one is a default location and which one is a fulfillment service location is by the legacy column we have in the store locations table. The migration for it and the model for it is created so you can take a look here. In database migrations if you scroll down you will see the store locations migration the table id is the incremental column and uh, id is here and store id is here and these two combined make up a unique index which is in the next migration so we created the table and in custom.php yeah in config custom.php we have a location tables indexes array so in this each of the keys represent which kind of data type we are expecting in it. Yeah, that's about it. So in locations job, uh, we are able to run this query insert into store locations and the values will be a dynamic string here and on duplicate key update the update string which would mean that it would ensure that there would be no duplications because we have added a unique index on the table. Right. So you would see this function this get locations for store and inside that I'm passing a store here. So first thing I'm doing is I'm building a query builder here. In the first step what it does is it gets the locations for the store which is a relationship in the store model. Uh, yeah so this is the get locations relationship basically it has many store location class based on these two keys and uh, I'm taking where legacy is this legacy. So if it says 0 then it will select for 0 otherwise for 1 and I'm selecting these four columns which I would need later in the code. But here is an if condition that if legacy is exactly equal to 1 which case we can do it, do it here. But so in that case I'm limiting the locations to just one limit to just one um, location because of the condition that I explained earlier once you assign an inventory to a third party location service you cannot uh, have that inventory be shared by other third party app services. So basically one product of one, uh, one variant of one product can only be managed by one third party service. And at the end we just put locations get. So if it doesn't then this query builder does not get updated and that's how it works. Okay so publish product. So this is the one that uh, I wanted to show you before. So let's uh, dump whatever we get from the front end. Yeah, so let me refresh. 
I will put this at my apartment I will put 15 inventory and my other apartment I'll put 20 and let's add another variant where we can say size Excel SKU is SKU 145 price is let's say 600 compare it is 750 and in this case we can say 18 you can say 22 right and let's create so this is the input that I received in the back end. Let me zoom in a little. So here we have our usual ones which we saw in the last video. But here is some extra parameters that I'm sending here. So 699382, this number is the location ID specified by Shopify. Underscore inventory underscore one. One means the first variant and two here means the second variant. And this is the pattern that I gave here. I realized I could have done with an array but uh, for the sake of this video let's go it this way. let's go for it this way so here we have 15 20 18 22 which is all fine so now let's see what i'm doing in the code so detail statement lets me move it so locations i got it uh, based on the legacy variable that that i have here <clears throat> yeah so in graphql payload is pretty much the same as we saw earlier but there is just one change here so the locations argument is sent in this function which is carried over here and this locations is again sent in this function for the variance information right so we have the taxable title compared price sku as we had before three or four new things have come up here so inventory item is the first one so inventory item basically says uh, whether the inventory is tracked or not or what is the unit cost of the item so basically it would mean that if I am uh, listing my product as 450 Indian currency on the store uh, the unit cost would say somewhere less than that because only then I'll be able to make a profit so that is that parameter inventory quantities is again branched into another function which I'll explain in just a moment inventory management now this has to be exactly matched by the value that we provide here so that is why we did if legacy is exactly equal to one then put fulfillment service because when legacy is one then we know that we are working with a third party uh, fulfillment service so that is why the fulfillment service string is here or otherwise if it is zero not one i mean then use shopify which would mean the default location that we have selected the inventory policy is deny the only two variables the only two values that is accepted here is continue and deny which would mean that even if you run out of the product you can still keep selling it on your online store and we have the price as we had that before now let's take a look at what this function is so here i have the key the request and the locations so i'm looping over the locations and uh, if location id with the inventory and with key plus one because PHP start their address with zero and the front end I am receiving from one. So if this location, uh, if this key is set in the request, then just take the available quantity, the value in it, which would mean this value 20. In case we are looking for this location, then that would mean the equivalent value. And the location ID would be the admin GraphQL API ID of the location. So as you know, that here in the get locations for store function we are also selecting the admin graphql api id so this is what we are appending here and at the end we are imploding it with uh, a comma appending the closing square bracket and returning it as a string so this is what we get here so let me show you the payload that got generated because of it so here we have the product create mutation yeah so let me dd it yeah so if i resubmit then yeah this is the product mutation product create mutation that we have so here we have the publish through the title uh, the vendor is shopify description html is this tags is this options is this and here are the variants so here we can see the inventory item the cost is 550 i took it the same value basically it would mean you are making no profit on the product if you are selling it tracked is true which means the inventory will be tracked the inventory quantity is uh, 
there are two indexes here because on the front end we also saw two indexes so this is what's here so location id is specified here if we open up yeah this is the location id and uh, the inventory management is shopify inventory policy is deny and the second variant starts here at this point so it follows the same thing this 18 and 22 and this is the payload that we are sending so let me yeah let me show you what the response is so let me resubmit again so here we have status code 200 and a body so inside this data inside this product create inside the product we have a shopify product id so this is the product id that got generated so let's take a look here so if i just paste this i have the test shirt and let's look at how it is reflecting here so this is a description which is fine l and excel is fine size l is 35 available at two locations and 40 available at two locations 550 and 600 total inventory is 75 so this is how it is reflecting the tags are here the vendor is here product type is here category is here yeah so this is how uh, the product is getting created along with the inventory information but now let me show you what happens when i turn this to one and let's take away this dd statement resubmit anyway i don't want to resubmit let's just refresh zoom out yeah now in the inventory info you will only see dsr's uh, fulfillment service which is the first one basically that we are getting we can get rid of it and i can show you the error message that you would get so let me comment this out so if i refresh then we have cj drop shipping and dsr's fulfillment service in this case it would not work so let me put the dd statement back up here so i will say test sure description this is size l sk is sku 123 price is 650 compared price is 750 add cj drop shipping it is 18 dsl footprint service it is 20 so let's create so here we have status code 200 and body is an array data is an array product create is an array inside this the product is null and inside the user errors we can see this message that comes up quantity for size l couldn't be set because inventory can only be managed by one fulfillment service which means that we can only specify one fulfillment service to be able to manage the inventory for the variant so this is why the th this one is here i have to put it like this and also we cannot use it in combination as well so for one variant i think you can work with all the default location and one fulfillment service i think in that case it will work but basically you cannot work with multiple fulfillment service apps at once for managing the inventory of a variant of a product so that is it yeah so even if i reload this product won't be created i think i need to refine this message by really putting the if condition here that if i specifically find an index only then i will say it is okay so so this is a review video where i have added a certain functionality here in my next video i will definitely add another code review video this is a two-parter video so i will have to provide a images section here so you should be able to add either uh, hosted urls for images or upload images straight from your system local system event okay that's about it see you